Today I'm exploring the Bavarian city of Regensburg, a medieval town with 2,000 years of history. The old town with its historic buildings survived the bombs of World War II. It has a connection to the devil and is a great spot to get into German sausage. <laughs> Doesn't it look like something straight out of a fairy tale? The cathedral spires, the river, the red roofs. It's giving medieval core to the max. And it's also close to one of Germany's most important national monuments, the Valhalla. So let's go and explore. Regensburg lies on the Danube River. It's an easy train ride from Munich, Nuremberg or Frankfurt. The city is located in Germany's south. And here's why it needs to be on your bucket list. Firstly, the whole of the old town is listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. I'm starting my day here in the old town at the St. Peter's Cathedral, which is under construction, okay, but we're working with it. It wouldn't be a travel report without some kind of construction site. At least this one we get to use to our advantage. VIP access. <laughs> Christian Brunner is an architect working on the upkeep of the cathedral. When he suggested we take the elevator to the top, this wasn't exactly what I was expecting. Not gonna lie, I never thought of myself as being afraid of heights, but this is pretty scary. At least the view is a good distraction. So this is quite a huge and impressive cathedral for a fairly small city. Can you tell me a little bit about the history of it? Yeah, so, so the cathedral you can see today uh, started its work in 1273. Before, yes, there was a Romanesque cathedral, but it burned down. And you are right, so the cathedral is pretty big for Ringsburg, but it's not as big. The so cathedral is around uh, 90 meters long. Uh, inside, uh, are around 38 meters of height and the towers are around 105 meters. So comparing to the city, the cathedral is big. Comparing to other cathedrals, to other Gothic cathedrals, it's average or small. I heard that the cathedral is inspired by the likes of Notre Dame in Paris or the Cologne Cathedral. Is that true? It is connected, sure. Uh, the Kölner Dom, Notre Dame, that's, that's for sure. Strasbourg. Um, so the Gothic wasn't invented in, in Regensburg. <laughs> it, it, it comes from France and like you said, it was inspired from these cathedrals. Americans, for example, love these kind of old style European cathedrals and medieval cities. Do you have any particular countries that stand out to you where you're surprised that maybe people are coming to Regensburg? No, no. I, I, there would be no surprise. They, they come from Australia, New Zealand, South America, Africa, Asia. I'd like to chat more to Christian Brunner about this amazing building, but the height is honestly becoming difficult. Yeah, uh, I think I'm ready to go back down. <laughs> like I've been on a boat <laughs> or something. <laughs> Shall we take a look inside? Look at all of the stained glass, isn't it beautiful? Most of these valuable stained glass windows were installed in the 13th and 14th centuries. They were all taken out during the Second World War for protection. So what you see here today are still originals. Just around the corner from the cathedral is another one of Regensburg's main attractions, the Stone Bridge, which is around 900 years old and is the oldest preserved bridge in Germany. Legend has it that the bridge builder made a pact with the devil to finish the bridge. The devil said he would help in exchange for the first three souls to cross the bridge. When the bridge was finished, the bridge builder sent a dog, a hen and a rooster. And the devil was so enraged that he tried to smash the bridge apart 
and that's why it's bent. Indeed, it does look somewhat crooked. Across the bridge, there's the tiny island of Stadt am Hof. It was once a separate medieval village, and now all of these colourful buildings are protected by UNESCO. Cute! I know it doesn't look like much from here, but see that tiny little spot behind the construction site? It's supposed to have the best Bavarian sausages in town, so let's go and get some food. The Historische Wurstküche, or Kuchel, directly translates into historical sausage kitchen and is basically old school fast food. This place has been around for 500 years. This is where the stonemasons and dock workers of Regensburg would come to have their lunch. The place has barely changed over the centuries. It still has the same open charcoal grill, homemade pork ham sausages and sauerkraut from their fermentation cellar. Good vibes all round. <laughs> I'm diving straight into the Bavarian cuisine with sausages, sauerkraut, beer, and mustard, of course. FYI, it has to be sweet mustard. I feel like the more time I spend in Germany, the more into sausages I get. They're actually really, really good. Let's go for a wander through the narrow lanes of Regensburg's old town. There's so many historical details, like clocks, murals, doors, and signs. This whole town feels so steeped in history. I mean, unlike many places in Germany, Regensburg survived World War II with almost no damage. And you can really tell, everything is so beautiful. There are also lots of beautiful artisan shops with handcrafted items. Fun fact, this hat shop actually made the Mad Hatter's hat for the Alice in Wonderland movie. For the end of my trip here in Regensburg, I'm headed somewhere pretty special. Just a 20 minute drive away, or in summer, a boat ride, is one of Germany's most important national landmarks. Valhalla. Conceived in 1807 by Crown Prince Ludwig of Bavaria, this memorial is a hall of fame honoring distinguished German-speaking politicians, sovereigns, scientists and artists. Like Mozart, Beethoven, Rubens and Goethe, for example. Incidentally, it is mainly men who are represented here, as it often has been in history. Valhalla was built to make the Germans more German, to celebrate the German nation. So to find out more, let's head inside. I'm meeting Dr. Thorsten Ma to find out why Valhalla was so important to the Bavarian prince. Crown Prince Ludwig just thought we should stick together if there are external danger and if there is external danger, we should stand uh, and fight together. And with, a, with this monument, he hoped to strengthen the patriotism and the national consciousness among the Germans. You can not only see busts, even memorial plaques, and both together are commemorating um, notable figures who together embody the greatness of Germany. That's what the idea. Where did the name Valhalla come from? I mean, that's a Nordic name, right? Why does it relate to, or how does it relate to Germany? In the North uh, mythology, the Valhalla was the hall of the heroes. And in the hall are all these brave, or the bravest warriors fallen in battle. They were coming together. And all these fallen warriors who are here are immortal because of their personal merit. Ludwig took the characteristics for his own Valhalla. So how does Valhalla hold a, a valid place in German thinking in society nowadays with 
Germany's history. After 1945, it was impossible to think about uh, uh, the German greatness or something like this. After Holocaust and uh, Nazi barbarism, it was definitely impossible. And so there was thinking another of looking for another meaning. Another aspect became more important, in fact, the memory of the eventful German history. Sophie Scholl opposed the Nazi regime. She was captured by uh, the Gestapo and finally murdered in 1943. With her, all the persons who resisted will be honored here. In memory of all brave persons who resisted against violence, injustice and terror of the Third Reich, which includes all persons and individuals who are not known by name yet, or we don't know the name yet. But that's very strong. That means everybody who resisted. And so we get politics into the Hall of Fame or the Valhalla, and it's not the Hall of Fame, it's the Hall of Memory. And so that's what it is today. Wow. Well, that was quite the experience. A real slice of German history. And to top it all off, the view from up here is absolutely incredible. What a way to end my trip here in Regensburg. Tell us, what was your favourite part about my trip here? Let us know in the comments.